Today, we're going to go over the stoichiometry review homework. Hopefully, this will answer any remaining questions that you have about the stoichiometry unit ahead of our exam this week. Let's take a look at the three problems we had for homework, beginning with problem number one. In problem number one, it says that we have silver nitrate, and it's being used to generate silver metal as our product says calculate the mass of silver nitrate. So we're looking for the mass of silver nitrate here required to form 155 grams of pure silver. So silver is way down here and we're trying to form 155 grams of it. This is actually a problem where we're going to be working backwards with, we're gonna start with our product and work backwards and see how much reactant we needed in order to get there. So before we can begin, um, we have to balance our equation. So in this case, we look at the coefficients here. We have one silver, one silver, one nitrate, but we have two nitrates on the right. So that means we're going to have to put a two in front of our silver nitrate and then a two in front of our silver. Both the copper and the copper two nitrate are going to end up with coefficients of one. Now. Again, beginning with the end in mind, we're going to start by looking at our 155 grams of silver. So I'm going to start by writing out 155.0 grams of silver. Just like the problems that we've been practicing, this is going to be a three conversion problem. So we're going from our mass of silver backwards to our mass of silver nitrate. So looking at our silver, if you look up on the periodic table, silver has a molar mass of 107.87 grams. So we're going to put the 107.87 grams here on the bottom for silver. And then on top, we're going to have one mole of silver. In our middle fraction, that is where we make use of the coefficients from our balanced equation. In our middle fraction, what we're going to do is change from moles of silver to moles of silver nitrate. So in this case, we see that we have two moles of silver, that's based on this number right here, for every two moles of silver nitrate, that's based on the two out in front. And finally, for our last fraction, we're now going to convert from moles of silver nitrate into grams of silver nitrate, something that we can weigh out. So we're gonna say that one mole silver nitrate has a mass of, now it should be 169.88, but just to show you where that's coming from, we have 107.87, that is the mass of silver plus 14.01, that's the mass of nitrogen, plus 48, which is the mass of three oxygens. Here's our total, 169.88 grams. Now, if you notice, all of our units are going to cancel out very nicely. So we have grams of silver, that's gone. Moles of silver, gone. Moles of silver nitrate, also gone. Now typing this into our calculator, I'm gonna start off with my 155. I'm gonna divide by my 107.87 because it's on the bottom of a fraction. I'm not gonna type in the times two and divided by two because they are just gonna cancel each other out. So if you have the same number on top and bottom, you can just skip over that. And then finally, at the end, we're going to multiply by the 169.88. We wind up getting an answer of 244. We're limited, in this case, to four significant figures, or five, really, if we look at the uh, 155 grams. So we're going to end up with an answer of 244.10. For 
grams of silver nitrate. That is the amount of silver nitrate that would be necessary in order to make the 155 grams of pure silver. So now let's have a look at problem number two. In problem number two, what we're gonna try and do is we're going to use a solution um, as opposed to just using solids. So this is where that molarity practice will come in. So it says, what is the maximum amount of silver chloride, that's over here, that can be formed from combining 250 milliliters of two molar sodium chloride. So they give us two pieces of information about sodium chloride. First, that you have 250 milliliters of it. And second, that its concentration is 2.00 molar. They also tell you that you have an excess, so more than enough of your silver nitrate solution. This is very similar to what we saw in the stoichiometry lab. You don't have to worry about the silver nitrate solution because you have more than enough of it. Okay, the next part says, what is the percent yield if a student does this and only recovers 65 grams of silver chloride precipitate? So we'll do that part at the end. The very first thing that we want to do in this problem is balance our equation. You're going to see because all of the charges are plus one or minus one, we wind up with ones straight across for all of our coefficients. Okay, now we are going to begin by looking at our sodium chloride solution. Now it's not convenient when they give it to us in milliliters. So my first suggestion to you is to convert from milliliters to liters. So the units will work out later on. To do this, take 250 milliliters and divide by 1,000. That's the number of milliliters in one liter. That will give you a volume of 0 0.2500 liters of sodium chloride solution. Now, this is again a three step problem. So we're going to go across and draw our three lines. Now, the only difference here when we're using volume instead of using mass is that our conversion isn't the molar mass off the periodic table. Our conversion is the concentration of sodium chloride solution in moles per liter. So if you notice, they told us that our solution right here has a concentration of 2.00 mole. Well, I'm going to write it on the side here. 2.00 molar means 2.00 moles of sodium chloride for every one liter of solution. And that's exactly how we're going to use it in our fraction. So we're going to put 2.00 moles of sodium chloride on top. And on the bottom, we're going to put one liter of solution. And that will allow liters and liters to cross out. My second fraction is going to make use of the coefficients from the balanced equation, just like we saw in problem number one. This time, we're going from sodium chloride to silver chloride. So one mole of sodium chloride is going to go on the bottom. One mole of silver chloride is going to go on top. Finally, in our last fraction, since we're trying to figure out the mass of silver chloride that forms, we're going to have to multiply by the molar mass. So we will have one mole silver chloride on the bottom. The molar mass of silver chloride is 143.32. To get that, you have 107.87, the mass of silver off the periodic table, plus 35.45, which is the mass of chloride off the periodic table. So we can go ahead and add in our molar mass up top. That will allow us to cross out that unit of moles of silver chloride. 
Now we can type everything into our calculator. So we have 0.25 times two because it's on top, and then times 143.32. And we wind up with a mass of 71.66 grams of silver chloride. This is our theoretical value. The problem also asks for us to calculate the percent yield. So to do this, you would put the experimental yield over the theoretical. So as a reminder, percent yield equals experimental, what we got by doing the experiment over theoretical. So in our case, percent yield is going to equal our 65 grams. That's what they told you in the problem was your experimental yield divided by your theoretical. It's the one we just calculated. Anytime you calculate something, usually that's going to be your theoretical value. And then we're going to multiply that by 100. So into my calculator, I'm going to type 65 divided by 71.66. Get an answer, multiply that by 100. So we get a percent yield of about 90.71. So a percent yield of 90.71. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at problem number three. Problem number three is our limiting reagent type problem. These problems tend to be the longest problems on the assignment and the most complex. Now, let's break this down piece by piece as we read through the problem. We start off, it says a company is looking to produce barium sulfate precipitate. So that's this compound all the way over here by combining 500 grams of barium chloride. So they're telling us the starting amount here, 500 grams, with 500 grams of sodium sulfate. So our second reactant is also 500 grams. So the first question says, in this process, which reactant is considered to be the limiting reagent? Now we're actually going to answer parts A and B at the same time, because in finding the limiting reagent, we are also going to find the theoretical yield of barium sulfate. But before we can do that, we need to go ahead and balance our equation, the lowest whole number coefficients. So on the left side, I have one barium. On the right side, I have one barium. On the left side, I have two chlorides. So I need to put a two in front of sodium chloride on the right side. On the left side, I have two sodiums. On the right side, I now also have two sodiums. On the left side, I have one sulfate, SO4, which can be treated as one thing because it appears the same way on both sides. On the right side, I also have one sulfate. So these other coefficients end up being just one. Now. I like to set up both strings going across for limiting reagent problems initially, and then I'll fill in all of the different parts as we work through. So I'm gonna start off here. We're gonna have 500 point grams of barium chloride. This will again be a three-step conversion. And the same for sodium sulfate, 500 grams of sodium sulfate. Also a three-step conversion. So now I'm gonna begin with my barium chloride string. I'm gonna go all the way across. The very first thing that I need to do because I'm in grams of barium chloride is I need to convert that into moles of barium chloride. So I need the molar mass. So if I look up barium on the periodic table, 
has a mass of 137.33. Plus, I need to add on two chlorines. So each one is 35.45. Two of them is 70.90. So we wind up with a molar mass for barium chloride that is equal to 208.23 grams. Okay, in my next fraction, I need to convert from barium chloride to the precipitate that we're looking for in this problem, which we mentioned earlier was barium sulfate. So at this point, I'm going to use my coefficients from my balanced equation in order to convert from barium chloride into the product that we're trying to find, barium sulfate. So to do this, we're going to put one mole of barium chloride on the bottom and one mole of barium sulfate on top. And we're going to finish this by converting our moles of barium sulfate into grams of barium sulfate. So in order to do that, we need to use the molar mass of barium sulfate. So we're gonna add that up right now. So barium is 137.33 plus sulfur, that's 32.07, plus four oxygens, that's 64, for a grand total of 233.4. 233.4 grams of barium sulfate for every one mole of barium sulfate. Now let's double check our units and make sure they cross out correctly. So grams of barium chloride, moles of barium chloride, finally moles of barium sulfate. So that leaves us with a unit of grams of barium sulfate. Typing that into the calculator, we get 500 divided by 208.23 times 233.4 for a grand total of 560 grams of barium sulfate. In our second part, we're going to basically do the exact same thing, but this time we're going to start with our other reactant, which is sodium sulfate. So the first thing that we need to do is find the molar mass for sodium sulfate. So I'm going to add that up using my calculator. I have 22.99 grams for one sodium. So I want to multiply that by two to get 45.98 grams. That's the mass of two sodiums. Plus now we're going to add on our sulfur, which is 32.07, plus 64 for our four oxygens. Each oxygen is 16, four of them is 64, and our grand total for sodium sulfate is 142.05 grams. That is the mass for one mole of sodium sulfate. So I can write moles of sodium sulfate on top. When you are doing limiting reactant problems, in order to compare two different reactants, you have to take them each to the same product so that you can compare apples to apples, or in this case, barium sulfate to barium sulfate. So we're gonna once again use our coefficients from the balanced equation. So we have one mole of Na2SO4 and one mole of barium sulfate. And then our final fraction is going to be set up the exact same way using the exact same numbers. So on top, we're going to have 233.4 grams of barium sulfate. And on the bottom, we're going to have one mole barium sulfate. And as we multiply all of this across, we have 500 divided by 142.05 because it's on the bottom multiply by 233.4 because it's on top. We get an answer of about 822 grams of barium sulfate. Now remember, this is a limiting reactant problem. 
we will never make 822 grams of barium sulfate because once we achieve 560 grams of barium sulfate, remember we started off with no barium sulfate at the beginning of the reaction, then we build up barium sulfate, it reaches 560 grams. Once it reaches 560 grams, all of my barium chloride has been used up. So I'm never going to get all the way up to 822. So we wanna cross this out so that we don't accidentally use it anywhere else. Instead, what we wanna do here is identify first our barium chloride, that's this part right here. This is our limiting reagent. The other thing that we want to identify is that barium sulfate, 560 grams of it, that is our theoretical yield. Okay, for the next part of the reaction, we're going to figure out what our percent yield is. So to do this, we have to look at our question once more. So in part C, it says, what is the percent yield of barium sulfate produced if the company is able to successfully produce 513 grams of the precipitate? So they were aiming to produce 560, but when they did it, in reality, they only ended up making 513. So some of it got stuck to the side of the container, some of it was dropped, some of it didn't form. Whatever the reason is, they didn't get all the way up to the 560. So what we're trying to figure out is what percent of the 560 were they able to produce? So to do this, we're gonna use our equation for percent yield. So percent yield is equal to our experimental value, that's the 513 that they were able to make, divided by our theoretical value, that's what we calculated at the beginning of the problem as 560 grams of barium sulfate, and then we're going to multiply that by 100. So now we're going to plug in our values and solve for percent yield. So percent yield is equal to 513 grams, that's what they were able pr to produce when they tried this in the lab, divided by 560 grams of barium sulfate, that's the theoretical amount that we calculated up here. And we're gonna multiply that by 100. So we wind up with our percent yield value equal to, just type this in here, 513 divided by 560 times 100. So we wind up with a percent yield value of 91.6%. Okay, in the last part of the problem, what we're going to do is we are going to calculate the amount of excess reagent. This part is for accelerated honors only. So if we take a look at part D, it says calculate the mass of our excess reagent. Well, in our case, the excess reagent is the sodium sulfate. That's the one that we had more than enough of. That's the one that gave us that impossible value of 822 grams of barium sulfate. So to calculate the amount of excess reagent, we first have to calculate the amount of sodium sulfate that we actually used when we made the 560 grams. So you can do this in one of two ways. You can either start with your theoretical yield or you can actually start with your limiting reagent. So this time I'm gonna start with the limiting reagent and go from barium chloride to sodium sulfate. Once again, this is going to be a three-step problem. So we're gonna start off with 500, grams of barium chloride. So 
We're going to go from grams to moles, just like we did earlier. One mole barium chloride over 208.23 grams of barium chloride. In the next fraction, we're going to go just next door. So from barium chloride to our other reactant, sodium sulfate. So one mole barium chloride, one mole sodium sulfate. And finally, for our last fraction, we're going to convert from moles of sodium sulfate back into grams of sodium sulfate. One mole sodium sulfate, 142.05 grams of sodium sulfate. So we start off with 500. We divide that by 208.23. We can skip the one over one. And then finally, we are going to multiply by 142.05. And we get an answer of 341 grams of sodium sulfate. This represents the mass of sodium sulfate that was used used when we made our 560 grams of barium sulfate. So to find the excess amount, we have to take that amount that was used and subtract it from what we started with. So if you recall in the problem, we started with 500 grams of both of our reactants. So we started with 500 grams of sodium sulfate. We used 341 grams of sodium sulfate. So that left us with an excess of 500 minus 341, or 159 grams excess. That is your answer to part D. Okay, thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. Have a great week.